pace with the present. Poised for the future. The 700 Club. With signs of chaos and turmoil all around us, what kind of leaders will decide the crucial issues of the day? Regent University exists for such a time as this. Offering an array of graduate degrees, Regent University is training leaders who are committed to the historic values that made our nation great. Visit Regent University during our upcoming preview and become a leader for such a time as this. The 700 Club presents Heart to Heart with Sheila Walsh. Hello and welcome to a special Heart to Heart. As a little girl, my guest today wanted to be a missionary like her parents. She even prayed to give her life in martyrdom if necessary. But she never made it to the Himalayan mountains on a mission stay like she had planned. Instead, she became the wife of the Reverend Billy Graham. Please welcome from Montreat, North Carolina, Ruth Graham. Thank you for having us to your home. Thank you. Little, uh, little Piney Cove is honored to have you here. It's beautiful here. It's so peaceful and quiet. Do you sit out here a lot? Yes, a lot. In the evening especially. It's mm. beautiful. Now, you were born in China of missionary parents. Right. And I wonder, if, how would you describe your mother and father? They were intrepid. That was back when China was going through difficult years between the the revolution of 1911 and then the, they left in 41 and there were we lived in bandit country and there was they were fighting between the Guomindang and the communists the Japanese the warlords the bandits so it was constant fighting and um, I never saw my parents show fear hmm. consequently I never knew what fear was and I had the privilege of growing up among happy missionaries I mean, happy missionaries were part of my, happy Christians were part of my heritage. And yet there were people who also had paid a price. Oh, for yes. I mean, you saw people who lost people that they loved very oh, dearly. Yes, yes there, there, was, there was a price to pay. And yet um, they, they never complained. They just kept on going. Now, you wanted to be a missionary like your mom and dad. Was it because they were so fulfilled in their life? I think so, and the fact that I wanted to go to Tibet because so few people, if any, had really gotten there with the gospel. And, but I think it's like boys dream of being uh, big league ball players. I don't think it was a call of God. I think it was a pipe dream. Hmm. Now you said, in, I read a biography where it said that you felt it would be a privilege to die for Christ. It's an unusual emotion for a young woman. Well, I, and I remember feeling it very strongly, but I think it's a whole lot harder to live for Christ than it is to die for him. <laughs> and so I think God knew what he was doing. And yet, a missionary friend in China described you as a very serious little girl, tender-hearted. Were you never broken by the things you saw around you? Yes, I think, I think they really made a deep impression on me. A baby thrown out alive and picked up two on the way to school. Um, they didn't bury little baby girls at that time. If they were bit bad before they were two, and the the pariah dogs would take care of the rest. And, and you see those as a child, it sort of gets through to you. Mm. But um, on the other hand, we saw that what the the difference that Jesus Christ Himself made in the lives of these Chinese who who came to know and trust Him. And incidentally, I, I hear from them every week. The ones we met in 1980, the 19 88, 1989, mm -hmm. that remembered the missionaries, and uh, with great love. And I think it was a surprise to the Chinese government when they saw that this love, that, which they had been taught, was not there, mm -hmm. had spanned the years. And um, they, they were taught that we exploited the Chinese. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't realize the difference between those who went to serve them and those who went to exploit them. And they were exploited by many business people, but the missionaries were there to serve. And uh, we had a hospital, and my father was the chief surgeon in this hospital. Mm -hmm. 
and wonderful stories he had, from a baby with a tail to a woman with a 96-pound tumor, and she only weighed 94 pounds, and when she, he removed the tumor, she had to learn to walk all over again because she'd lost her sense of ballast. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful stories like that. When you came to study in America, and you went to Wheaton College, was there a time when you struggled to make this faith of your parents real for you? Yes, I bumped into a son of missionaries that I had not seen for some time, and he had been to the University of Chicago, and he, he said to me, Ruth, you ought to lose your faith. It'd be good for you. But no one ever said that to me before. And it shook me up a bit. And then I did begin to question. I began to question everything except the existence of God, because mm -hmm. I couldn't look up at the stars at night and not know that there was a creator. But was Jesus his son? Was the Bible his word? I, I argued with everybody who came within sight and they thought, oh, here comes Ruth. <laughs> and <we're not> arguing. <laughs> but even though you struggled for a while and you argued because you wanted to know it was real, you did come to a point of knowing without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus was indeed God's Absolutely. only son. Absolutely. had someone who just, he was brilliant, but just step by step gave me reasons why we believe the Bible to be the Word of God, why we believe Jesus to be the Son of God. And then there is the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And once I realized that, there was no more problem. Do you remember the first time you set eyes on a young, tall, lanky, blonde boy that we now love as Dr. Billy Graham? <laughs> he was dashing down the steps of East Blanchard, and I was walking up, and I thought there was a young man in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Been in a hurry ever since. That's right. <laughs> Were you immediately attracted to him? Was there something about him that you found winsome? Not at that particular dash, but <laughs> I used to go on early morning, Sunday morning um, missions, uh, go out, can't, uh, crusade in the country, had a child evangelism crusade, things like that. And the men met in one part of Williston lobby and the women across the hall. And I heard this man praying, and I thought, there's a man who knows to whom he is speaking. Hmm. And I mean, there was an earnestness about it. And that impressed me. And then um, I'd heard about him. About him. He was transferred from back to college in Florida. And um, then he we were met, introduced once, and he got up enough courage to invite me to the Messiah. And, and um, all I remember is going back home and kneeling down that night and saying, Lord, if you'd let me spend the rest of my life with that man, I consider it the greatest privilege. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I didn't know what I was praying. If I'd known what lay ahead, I wouldn't have had the nerve to pray, pray a prayer like that. And yet, you are a very strong woman very gifted woman. Dr. Gray perhaps brought up in more a tradition where the man had his vision and ran with it and expected you perhaps to trot along behind. Oh, Was yes. that hard for you? Um, no. No, I think if I hadn't wanted so much to be a missionary, I would have felt left behind and mm. had a pity party. But uh, having want, wanted so much to be a missionary, I could vicariously enjoy his, his um, trips and get a tremendous thrill out of his ministry. At the same time, I love staying at home and I love being with the children. Mm -hmm. And my parents were alive and across the street and I loved the time because I had to leave when I was 13 to go to high school in North Korea and hadn't seen them much since. So it was great. And no, God knows what he's doing. But I wondered when you were, when you first sat there and, and heard Dr. Graham preach and saw the response of the crowd saw the numbers who went forward. Do you remember how you felt at that moment? I just knew that God's hand was on him. Mm -hmm. I knew that there was an earnestness about him that, that um, I had not detected in any other man I had met. A, a deep commitment. And um, we did have our disagreement because I was determined that he would go to bed as a missionary with me. <laughs> and finally he said, Ruth, do you think God brought us together? And I really did. And he said, in that case, God will lead me and you'll do the following. And I've been, <laughs> I've been following you ever since. <laughs> the first year of marriage, was it what you thought a married life would be? No. That's a, it's a good thing when we pray that we don't always know what's going to, how God's going to answer our <laughs> man. Uh, 
I remember <laughs> one day in this little house, Bill said we had this gorgeous home in Hill Hinsdale, Illinois, and Hinsdale was known for being, having millionaires, so I pictured this upstairs of this home, and we got there, and it was two blocks from the Burlington Railway, <laughs> and we had, we had this dreary little apartment upstairs, and I wanted to, so I got claustrophobia and some